dog going? What are you doing looking around on the ground? Well, looking for things like this. This is Hebaloma crustuliniforme, or the poison pie. And uh, it really does look like a pie crust. Baker man, baker man, bake me a pie. Just not with these bad boys. They got a brown spore print, and uh, they say that they were somewhat poisonous. Now you can read between the lines on that, and uh, we're going to call it poisonous. But yeah, they're, uh, like, I mean, it's too bad that they are poisonous because they're quite uh, meaty. But yeah, you can see that uh, the gills kind of go down the stipe. And, but yeah, so much looks like a pie. Wow. Poison pie. Stay away from this bad one. It is that time of year that the, some of the coral mushrooms are here. And uh, you can see these little guys hiding in here. This is uh, Clavulina cristata. And they are edible. Yes, they are. Um, you can tell, look at their little... Each coral tip kind of has like a little crown. And... I'm just pop one out. And I have not tried them yet, but tonight is the night. There's only one look-alike, and it's not totally the instead of having the little crowns they're more of a club and it's a totally different uh, genus and I believe it's Romeriopsis kunzii but yeah I'm gonna harvest some of these little ones and try them out look delicious they can um, as they get older they can get you little yellow tips on them but yeah very nice and not a huge amount of them but uh, Maybe enough to have a little taster. Excellent. You know, absolutely gorgeous out in the forest. And you can walk by everything, you know, and all you got to do is stop and take the time to take a look. You know, those little white nubs there, that's that uh, Cristata, the Clavulina, the coral. And then uh, we've got right above them, we've got uh, some Helvella. Lassinosa. And you can see that they're already dropping spores and everything. It's beautiful. There's another one right over there. And then you just turn around and you see Lucaria. One of these, I believe this is Lucaria bicolor. I'm not positive. But uh, yeah, and then turn another 90 degrees. There's a little dog. Oh, that was about 45. So, right over here, just loads of little Mycenas. And not just Mycenas. There's different types. Different species can grow all in amongst themselves. See? It's an LBM, but not the same as these guys. Pretty amazing. And, you know, sometimes you got to look underneath to find some mushrooms. And there's a little tiny, tiny one down there. Right here. But, uh, yeah, just all you gotta do is stop. Take a look around. If it's summertime, smell the flowers. And you know, when you're harvesting, you know, the closer to the ground you get, the more you're gonna see. So you can see that I have been harvesting my cristata there. And right below, are these beautiful little bird's nest mushrooms and I don't know the actual taxonomy of them but they're very cool and in those little cups they have a little uh, seed pods kind of thing as they were but they're little pouches of spores and here's a brand new one that's not opened yet and they honestly look like little nests with eggs in them these ones have lost them all and when the raindrop lands in the nest, it tosses out one of these little sacks of, of spores. Some of them actually even have a little tiny fibrous thread attached to them so that when they fire out, they can hang off of a branch and drop their spores from the air instead of doing it right from the ground. Evolution is amazing. 
give anything a chance and they'll find a niche out in the wilderness. All right. I am spotting a whole bunch more clavulina, little coral mushrooms, and I'm going to keep on harvesting. And we have some hyphalomas. First glance, you're going to say, oh, that's Hyphaloma fasciculare, the sulfur tuft, which is poisonous, well, toxic. But this is actually Hyphaloma capnoides. They are related, but this is the smoky gill, or conifer tuft. Yeah, Hyphaloma capnoides. Pretty amazing, uh, and they are very tasty. So I've tried these already, and uh, quite delicious. So these are coming home with me. I'm going to fill up my basket with as many as I can get. So I know that the ducks like to congregate down this end of the field at this time of evening. Let's see if we'll sneak up on them. There they are. There they are. That's the uh, green-headed mallard, Anas platyrenchos. There's normally two or three times that amount here. And from a distance, I thought these were the uh, Hyphaloma capnoides, which I have been harvesting right here, along with some candy caps. But these, believe it or not, growing on a fir log, are the late fall oyster mushroom, or oysterling, Sarcomyxa serotina. Uh, sarco means fleshy. Myxa means slime or uh, mucus. And uh, serotina means late, or serotin means late. But these guys are just beautiful. And uh, I find them tasty. They're not really highly sought after, but, you know, they're very fleshy. You can see the foot. They don't really have a true stipe, and uh, it's quite yellow. And the gills stop right there. Very cool. And you can see it's quite slimy. But again, tasty. I actually did these in olive oil one time and they turned out like mushroom french fries. Very delectable. But yeah, very bizarre. They normally grow on hardwood trees, usually the uh, red alder. And uh, this one is growing on a fir. And yeah, this is a branch of a fallen cedar tree, so don't think that that's actually the tree. Just have to look at the bark and you know it's a dug fir. This is a perfect example of the mycelium, as it's growing, this is the underneath side of a uh, panthernoides, the Amanita, uh, the panther cap. And look at them. The, the mycelium are just going nuts under there. Just amazing. And that's how they do their thing each year. They drop their spores, they make new mycelium, and they just carry on, proliferating all around. Mushrooms can be so hidden and deceiving. And then there's ones that just stick out like a sore thumb. This is a uh, Leucopaxillus giganteus. And I just got to get up here to it. And you can see they kind of got like uh, their, their main body looks kind of like leaves. And uh, kind of like a giant Rusula. But yeah. Edibility, uh, I don't know about this one. Um, I don't think it is, and if it is, it's probably tasteless. But way too far gone anyways. And when it comes to mushrooms, even the most edible ones, oh, here's another one hidden right here underneath all the organ grape. But yeah, when they start getting uh, they start to go bad, get long in the tooth. You can get very sick just from that, even the most edible mushrooms. So keep that in mind when you're harvesting. If you find an oldie, toss it. Let it dump some more spores out in the bush. Mm -hmm.